Welcome to the Radiology Vault, an open repository for radiology educational content designed for learners and medical professionals. Presented by the Michigan Medicine Department of Radiology. Hi, my name is Tanya Raman, and I am a breast imaging radiologist at the University of Michigan. Today, I will be speaking to you about MRI-guided breast biopsy. I have no disclosures. Please note, the content I'll be discussing today is not meant to replace formal accredited training in breast imaging or MRI-guided breast biopsy. It is meant to serve as an introduction and overview of the technical steps involved in performing MRI-guided breast biopsy. Breast cancers develop tumor angiogenesis and increased vascular permeability. As a result, they demonstrate contrast enhancement on MRI. Classically, a breast cancer may demonstrate a washout pattern of an enhancement, where it rapidly takes up the injected intravenous contrast and then quickly returns it into the circulation. Suspicious breast MRI findings are often classified as masses or non-mass enhancement, as shown on the images on the screen. We will review an example case to understand how MRI-guided breast biopsy is performed. This patient had an area of suspicious non-mass enhancement in the lower outer left breast. There was no sonographic or mammographic correlate. Therefore, this patient underwent MRI-guided breast biopsy. On the post-contrast images, you can see the suspicious clumped non-mass enhancement and the slightly posterior lower outer breast. It's located anterior to these intrinsically T1 hyperintense non-enhancing ducts. The first step for an MRI-guided breast biopsy is pre-procedural planning to ensure success on the day of biopsy. I first review the MRI and familiarize myself with the lesion morphology, its size, location, and enhancement pattern. I try to determine how accessible this lesion will be to biopsy. MRI-guided breast biopsies are performed with the breast in compression in a medial lateral fashion, so the options for the approach are only lateral or medial. It is typically easier to access the breast from a lateral approach, so that is usually the preferred approach. Lesions that are superficial or close to the skin in the far posterior or retroareolar breast can be challenging to access and biopsy. Lesions that will wash out quickly may become less conspicuous as the procedure progresses. I also review the mammogram. The mammogram will inform you of the breast thickness when in compression. Patients with thin breasts may require petite needles with a smaller trough, whereas patients with thicker breasts may better accommodate a standard needle with a longer sampling trough. Review the mammogram and pre-select the biopsy marker shape that is most appropriate for your patient. I also review patient allergies and any special contraindications or patient factors. I write down brief notes with this pertinent information prior to the biopsy. I also create a simple diagram of the expected location of my target after reviewing the MRI to assist in positioning on the day of biopsy. On the day of biopsy, the patient is consented, the breast is cleaned, and the patient is positioned with the help of the technologist. The patient lays prone with their arms up over their head and their breast in the breast coil. We use plastic compression plates to place the breast into compression. One of the plates is a grid that is placed on the side of the biopsy, and it's used to assist with localization. A fiducial marker or vitamin E tablet is placed in a reference box to help localize the target. When positioning, we anticipate where the expected location of the target will be. We position the breast so that this location is within the grid and accessible for biopsy. We also ensure adequate compression of the breast in this location so that the target does not become displaced during the procedure. It can be useful to have mammography technologists present and assist in challenging cases, for example, patients with breast implants. After appropriate positioning, we obtain an initial pre-contrast image. We verify that the fiducial or vitamin E marker is visible. 
and we estimate the expected location of our target using landmarks and determine if it will fall within the grid and be accessible. If this is the case, we will then inject IV contrast. On the post contrast image here, we have identified our target in the yellow circles on both the axial and sagittal planes. It can be helpful to match another landmark like this fat lobule to improve confidence in the selected target. Once the target has been identified, measure the distance from the skin to the target on the axial image to determine the depth to set on the introducer. Next, identify the location on the grid where to place the introducer. This can be done using software or it can be done manually using a worksheet. In the manual localization method, place the mouse cursor over the lesion as you hold it still, scroll to the plane at the skin surface showing the grid box, and note the location of the target in the grid relative to the fiducial and mark that on the worksheet. This is the kind of worksheet you will use. In the image view section, mark the location of the fiducial and the location of the target. Then transfer that to the patient view part of the worksheet. Take the completed worksheet into the scanner room and tape it next to the patient for your reference. After the target has been localized, Assemble the introducer. The introducer kit includes a plastic introducer, a sharp stylet, a plastic obturator, and a needle guide. Place the sharp stylet flush within the introducer. There is a black stopper on the outside of the introducer. Slide that to the measured depth from the axial image. The needle guide sits in the targeted grid box and holds the introducer in place. The introducer is hollow and will accommodate the vacuum assisted biopsy device when it is time to sample. Next, reclean the skin and numb the patient's breast. Ensure that the numbing reaches the appropriate depth based on your measurements from the axial image. After numbing is complete, I usually recommend making a skin incision with a scalpel to minimize tenting or displacement of the breast when the introducer is advanced. If you use a scalpel, be sure to hand it back to the technologist if it may be ferromagnetic. Next, place the needle guide in the proper grid box. Then advance the introducer with the sharp stylet using a twisting motion to ensure that you penetrate the tissue and reach your target rather than displace it. Once the introducer has been advanced to the appropriate depth, remove the sharp stylet and replace it with the plastic obturator. Then take an image to assess the location of the introducer. After we have placed the introducer, we see it on our image as a linear susceptibility artifact. Compare it to the prior image to ensure it is appropriately positioned. The initial target has now become less conspicuous and the surrounding breast tissue has started to enhance more with time. But when we compare our landmarks, it appears to be appropriately positioned. Review the introducer position on two planes. On the sagittal plane, determine if directional sampling may be beneficial in this case, the introducer may be slightly cranial to the expected location of the target, which is now difficult to see, but we will plan to take extra samples towards the foot of the patient to ensure accurate sampling. Return to the patient, remove the plastic obturator, and insert the biopsy device. Take samples as you go around the clock. In this case, we plan to take extra samples toward the foot, which translates to three o'clock. The biopsy device is vacuum assisted and may come in a standard and petite size. The standard needle has a longer trough and sharp tip. The petite needle has a shorter trough and may have a blunt tip. Some vendors recommend taking twice the number of samples if using a petite needle as you would for a standard needle. They may use their own introducer sets that may not be interchangeable. It can also be helpful to have a diagram such as the one on the top right of the screen with measurement specifications to reference when planning target localization. Knowing the distances can help ensure the needle will be appropriately positioned in the breast and adjust if needed to avoid penetrating to the other side or inadvertently sampling the skin surface. After sampling, you may place a biopsy marker and take an image or take an image before placing the biopsy marker, depending on how well your patient is tolerating the procedure. In this case, we see that after we have sampled, 
There are post biopsy changes in the expected location of our target. Another image was taken after biopsy marker placement, which shows a new susceptibility artifact. It can be useful to take an image after sampling and prior to marker placement to reduce confusion over identifying the biopsy marker versus post biopsy gas. After the biopsy, pressure is held over the biopsy site and then a post procedure mammogram is obtained to ensure appropriate location of the biopsy marker. In this case, the marker appears to be in the correct location when comparing to the MRI. In this case, the pathology results revealed invasive ductal carcinoma and the patient underwent mastectomy. Those are the basic steps of an MRI guided breast biopsy. I hope this talk provided you with a better understanding of this procedure. Please email me if you have any questions.